Uh, today in Council, uh, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has submitted uh, two memos. One is for the uh, revised estimated total cost for the supply of cattle uh, for Taraba State under the emergency agricultural intervention for states that were affected by conflict and insecurity. And the other memo is on the um, National Action Plan on Human Trafficking in Nigeria 2022 to 2026. All the two memos were graciously approved by Council uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, please. Works and Housing submitted two memoranda. Uh, the first <clears throat> was for the termination and reaward of the 49 kilometer section of uh, Abaji to Koton Cafe, which is part of the Abuja Lokoja Highway. And it was awarded uh, in favor of Mrs. Geld uh, for 56 won. 56.175 billion naira, uh, and hopefully this should facilitate the completion of that uh, critical highway, which started in 2006. Um, the second memo was for the revision of the contract sum of the Afon Aboto or your boundary road in Quara. Um, the revision was by the sum of 251,530,000 naira, which revised the contract sum from 3 billion and 60 million to 3 billion and 311 million uh, to enable the contractor uh, make provision for drains to replace unsuitable material and to reconstruct damaged shoulders of the road as well as accommodate some variation in prices. The memo was also approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this uh, afternoon, uh, the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation presented a memorandum <clears throat> to the Federal Executive Council, uh, which uh, we are so happy uh, that the Federal Executive Council approved. And the memorandum essentially was a revision uh, of the science, technology, and innovation policy for our dear country. Uh, the, they've been uh, tremendous advances uh, in science, uh, technology, and innovation um, all over the world. And uh, this necessitated uh, the <clears throat> for our science, technology, and innovation policy, which was put in place in 2012, 10 years ago, uh, to be revised so that uh, we can keep pace with uh, new and emerging uh, technologies. Uh, the uh, main objective is for us to use science, technology, and innovation to improve the standard of living of our citizens and ensure that we have high quality of life uh, for all Nigerians. And this we can get if our nation becomes more prosperous and our economy uh, is more globally competitive. Uh, again, uh, our, we would like to see Nigeria uh, using this policy to be one of the top uh, leaders uh, in uh, sci one of the top uh, scientific powers in the world. Uh, we believe that this will help our country to keep narrowing the gap between us 
and the technologically developed countries of the world. And uh, ultimately, ultimately, once we achieve that, we should be able also to overtake the way nations like uh, China, you know, has done. Nigeria should be able to do so. Thank you so much. The result of the fourth quarter uh, of the economy performance, which was released over the last hour over the weekend, the Honorable Minister of State for Border and National Planning is going to give us the details of the border perform of the performance of the economy in the fourth quarter of 2021 as released by the National Bureau of uh, Statistics. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> as was not to seek approval, but to uh, brief the Federal Executive uh, Council on the results uh, recently released by the National Bureau of Statistics of the fourth quarter uh, GDP and uh, also some other indicators of the Nigerian uh, economy. Uh, according to the report, uh, Nigeria GDP grew by 3.98% uh, year on year in real terms in the fourth quarter of 2021. Uh, this shows a sustained uh, positive uh, growth for the fifth quarter since the recession witnessed in 2020 when output contracted by minus 6.10% uh, and minus 3.62% in quarter two and quarter three of 2020 under uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So this uh, shows an annual growth rate of 3.4% in 2021 compared to the minus 1.92% in 2020 which is the strongest growth so far recorded in seven years since uh, 2015. Uh, Council was also briefed <laughs> that inflation rate declined year on year for eight months uh, consecutively since April 2021, but it increased slightly in December 2021, uh, with 15.63% was uh, recorded. However, headline inflation in January 2022 declined by 15.60% on a month-on-month -month basis. The prices rose by 1.47% in January, which was lower compared to December 2021, which recorded 1.82%, meaning that inflation uh, dropped on a month-on-month -month, uh, basis. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, you say the, <coughs> the figures that we are giving shows that uh, there is a positive uh, trajectory in terms of uh, the economy. Uh, I think first we need to understand what GDP itself uh, uh, means. It's uh, the, the, the totality of the value of goods and services. It's an indication of what is happening in the, in the economy. When you are having more spend, uh, more transactions are, are going on, it means that the economy itself is, uh, is growing. And uh, if it's declining and you have uh, uh, such negative uh, decline in two quarters, then we will say you are in a recession. And uh, NBS has consistently given these figures, whether they are positive or they are negative. And then we compare them either on month-on-month -month basis on year-on-year -year basis. And then we also have what those figures are annually, which uh, tends to show us or indicate whether we are making progress or not. Uh, what those numbers show is that there's a steady uh, uh, progress that is uh, being uh, made. But whether it is far-reaching enough is a different uh, 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 ball game. And that's why you see in, in the National uh, Development Plan 2021 to 2025, we are looking for a growth rate of an average of 5%. Uh, uh, percent. We, we, we haven't gotten there yet, but it's beginning to move towards that uh, trajectory. In terms of uh, inflation, for about uh, 17 months consecutively, you find that inflation rate was uh, going up. But what we are beginning to see 
is that for eight consecutive months, there's a steady decline. It's not so much of a heavy decline, but there's a consistency in that uh, decline, uh, both for headline and food uh, uh, inflation. But in December, we noticed that there was a slight uh, increase. And of course, uh, you know what normally would happen at the end of the year when uh, everybody is chasing the, uh, the few uh, available goods. So the demand, of course, uh, is much, much uh, higher than the supply. But the good news is that in January, there was also uh, a, a, a decline. And we noticed that the food index uh, increases was uh, around prices of bread and uh, cereal, and then food products not elsewhere classified. Things like potatoes, uh, yam, and other tuba, soft drinks, oil, fats, and fruits. So the economy is being worked on. Uh, is a work in progress. Uh, I can't uh, uh, give you a definitive date when inflation is going to be below uh, uh, 10%. But the fact that we say that there is inflation means that the prices are, are high and it's being uh, worked on. Abuja to Kefi, um, we, the reason we're there in the very first place to build the road is because uh, it has become insufficient to manage the large traffic of commuters. And uh, <clears throat> we understand the inconvenience that uh, commuters feel. Uh, trying to use that road, and uh, we we appeal to them to bear with us. It's a challenge for us. I think almost about uh, 15 to 20 thousand vehicles, if not more, use that corridor now almost on a daily basis. We wish we could shut it down so that we can have uninterrupted construction uh, operations. But unfortunately, that's not possible. So while we manage traffic, people have to drive through a construction site we're building. So please bear with us. We will do the best that we can to minimize the inconvenience. And when the road is finished, I'm sure that the current inconvenience will be, would have been well worth the wait and the experience. Uh, with regards to the NMPC road, I think people should also remember there have been all sorts of very wild allegations in the public space by uh, people about whom I will comment later because there's a, there's a parliamentary investigation on that matter at the moment. But I think what people should remember first is that this initiative started very late last year. Construction companies traditionally, if you know the industry, go on break between the mid of December and return in the mid of January. They have to remobilize uh, they have to order supplies, laterite, stones, sand, and all what they need. So work has really just started perhaps in February. But our zona directors were around all the sites, and the story is different from site to site. In some places, earthworks have started, are just started. In some places, uh, cement stabilization is going on. In some places, they are constructing drains. In some places, they've started to lay asphalt. So it's, it's, it's at different places where working, the result we intend to deliver is over several hundred kilometers of roads covering those 21 roads. So, and that won't happen overnight. So people should bear with us and see us do our work and watch us do our work. Uh, and should you want to visit the sites, let me know if you can coordinate it. I will arrange for a visit so that you can actually go and see and report. But work is going on. The figure for the uh, procurement, uh, as I mentioned, is an uh, agricultural emergency intervention that was uh, to be taken to the conflict-affected states and is in the tune of $2 billion and some millions thereabouts. Thank you.